Hello friends and welcome back to another episode of our Pokemon VGC 2020 battle series. We are here in the brand new season kicking off. We started last week with that Rayoga team and uh, we're carrying on with a brand new team. This week I'm just logging on to the Wi-Fi to the battle spot so we'll see the team in a minute on the screen. As always it is down in the description below there is a raw piss and a poker piss of the team and it is a little bit different from last week. It's going to be something that we had requested last week from one of you guys. So if you would like to see another team featured next week, um, if we don't stick with this one or in the future, please let me know in the comment section down below and uh, we will make sure to feature whatever you would like to see going forward. I'd like to get through as many archetypes as possible going forward. I feel like this one that we're going to play this week is something that we can probably mold and really refine going into next week on the channel. So we may play this one for two weeks, but let me know down in the description, um, down in the comment section down in the description what am I talking about I'm sorry I'm a bit delirious today here is the team my name is Lee also known as Osiris just for you guys to know um as I say I'm feeling a bit delirious today here's the team uh we've got Groudon we've got Kyogre we've got Tapu Koko Stack Attacker Salamence and Incineroar so lots of familiar picks here um and uh, like I say this feels like a team that needs refining um, and what I want to do and what we used to do on the channel was we play a team and start out with it We test it and then we refine it in the second week So we may do this but if you guys would like to see other calls played like I say I'm happy to move on and this team might work out and we might be able to just identify some stuff and finish up the week with a Refined product rather than dragging it out for two weeks so we can get through more teams because bear in mind We've only got till probably the 15th of November to play this battle series in Ultra before we move into Sword and Shield, which is what everyone will want to see after Sword and Shield is released. And I've got a ton of content planned for when Sword and Shield comes out. Very excited for it. Um, before we do anything, let's get over into this screen so we can see our rating and stuff like that. And... Um, as I say, I'm feeling a little bit delirious today. I've not felt very well. Do you know Do you know when you get that feeling when you're like, ah, I just don't feel right. And uh, I've had that literally all day. I've felt like I've had these horrible bouts of like dizziness and feeling sick and just shaky. And it keeps coming and going. And uh, you're probably sitting there thinking, why are you recording tonight? Well, tonight I had some free time and I thought I'll put the team together. We'll get some episodes out because who knows, tomorrow I might be really ill. But I do feel like I'm getting really sick and it feels like it's kind of one of those things that will either go away or it'll hit me really hard. And I hope it's the, the former, not the latter. So yeah, if I'm just jabbering as well, I do apologise. I do feel a little bit out of sorts, but... I hope you're all well. Hope you all had a great weekend and uh, are looking forward to some uh, Pokemon games as well. And we're finally playing Dual Primals. I kind of wanted to throw Cresselia in there, but uh, with Cresselia, oh, I just feel like Bronzong would make sense as well. Cresselia, Bronzong are obviously the, the obvious picks here. But Stack Attacker just gives us that better answer to uh, Xerneas. It obviously helps us a lot more. We're not really that week against Ivelto, even though we've got Coco in of our own. Uh, I just feel like Stack Attacker with Wide Guard helps us out a lot more. We've got Skill Swap there, we've got the Trick Room, um, and I just feel like Stack Attacker can give the team a lot more than um, what Bronzong or Cresselia can, and maybe that's something we look at and change later on in the week, but we've got our first opponent, so first test, here we go, so we'll hop straight into Team Preview. Right, our first opponent is running a team of Ferrothorn, Thunderous Therian, Landorus Therian, Duskman, Necrozma, Kyogre, and Shininja. That Pokemon that uh, gave us so many troubles last week on the channel. Um, so our Trick Room here is going to be like pretty good, especially seen as Groudon is a kind of main Trick Room user. Um, yeah, like it, Groudon doesn't really care about Ferrothorn at all. Um, Incineroar, like fake out Trick Room. I don't know how they're going to kind of get around that, um, to be honest. So we can go for that, go for that. I mean, their best lead, looking at their team preview, is probably going to be Landorus Kyogre. Uh, that would be my kind of best bet. We'll go Groudon, and uh, do we want to bring Kyogre as well? Kyogre's going to be nice as a, as a switch in. 
um, although Mints could just generally be good as well um, Mm, it's a toughie, but uh, oh, I think I'll go Kyogre, you know. I think I'll go Joe Primal. Yeah, well, okay. Okay, we've got our first opponent. We're going to go in with Joe Primals. There's an argument there that Salamence could be good because it's a nice switch in for Landorus. Uh, we can hit the Ferrothorn. We can hit the Sheninja for good damage. We've got Draco Meteor on there as well to hit Ultra Necrozma if it does turn out to be Ultra Necrozma, but uh, we'll see. We're not going to see that Landorus and Kyogre lead. We're going to see the lovely pink, shiny Duskmane Necrozma um, and the Thunderous Therian. I would imagine the Thunderous probably has Taunt, maybe. Um, that would be like my best guess. Uh, the Dustman's probably got the Trick Room there, so uh, getting the Intimidate onto it's nice. And you know what, I'm just going to fake out the Thunderous here and I am going to Trick Room because I feel like if the Necrozma has got... Ah! <laughs> what is this? What is going on? Okay, free win. This just makes me feel like I'm going insane. You know, I said I feel delirious. This just doesn't happen. But that's a bit disappointing. We'll get into our next one. Hopefully it doesn't take too long to find our next opponent. But uh, sad that we're not able to get that game underway. I don't know why you'd forfeit. Maybe you just think, I've got no way to stop the trick room. I'm just going to lose. And I, I don't know. You would have a goal, though. You would have a goal. Maybe they didn't have a correct move on one of their Pokemon. Possibly it could be a number of different issues there uh, music what we're we gonna go for um, I Never pick battle royale and I'm never I'm not really a big fan of it at all I always th look at it and just cringe a little bit. I always think of how that's the why I don't know There might be a lot of how fans out there, so I'm sorry if you do like that guy but he's not, not, <laughs> not for me. Uh, we've got Radiant up next, so we'll get into team preview and stop talking about how and uh, Battle Royale and stuff. Right, our next opponent is running Rabombi, uh, Groudon, Xerneas, Togunamaru, Salamence, and Kangaskhan. So we've got dual Megas on this team. We've got the Salamence and the Kangaskhan, depending on what the, the matchup is. You've got the speed control, going to be from the Rabombi, probably providing Tailwind support. Uh, Togunamaru, Fast Fake Out, uh, Groudon, and then Xerneas. So, Trick Room going to be really good here if we can get it up. Uh, it's going to be difficult to get it activated, but I mean, if we can get it going, then it's obviously going to make things a lot easier for us, isn't it? Um, Stax does so well against Xerneas, like the majority of this team, really, apart from the Groudon. So, that's the, the one big thing that we need to make sure that we are dealing with here. Um... I do like my own Groudon in this matchup as well. But then again, I do like uh, Kyogre as well. Pfft, do I want to bring Kyogre? Like, Kyogre is like just. Uh, dual Primals is good. We could potentially lead off with something like Stack Attacker. Um, Ments. Or Incineroar. Like, Incineroar is going to be pretty decent here anyway. So I think, yeah, Dual Primals. Stacks. And Incineroar, we'll go with that and we'll see how we get on. Hopefully we can finish this match. Do you imagine if we had like three games and each one was like forfeit, first turn? <laughs> Be the weirdest episode ever. But um, it's not gonna it's not gonna happen. I feel I feel confident about Radiant. He's gonna um he's gonna play this out. I'm gonna see Groudon and Kangaskhan come out for my opponent. Uh I mean do we trade fake outs here? I mean, are they going to fake our Incineroar out? That's the, the big question here. Or are they going to fake stacks out? Who knows? Uh, I wonder how fast that Groudon is as well. I mean, getting the Intimidate off is always going to be nice. Do they fake out stacks? I don't think they do. I think they fake out Incineroar. Like, honestly, 
and just go for Precipice Blade. Although, I don't think they do. They probably think that we've probably got Shooker or something on... Um, let's go Trick Room. Let's try and get the Trick Room up with stacks. And let's go for a Fake Out into to Groudon. I think they probably think we've got like Shooker Berry or something on the stack. So we'll take the Precipice Blade. So they probably want to Fake Out Stacker this turn. I would imagine. We'll just trade Fake Outs. Yeah. Fake Out. Where you going? Yeah, so we'll trade. It does break our sash, which is a little... Oh no, we're not even sash, are we? We're, I think... Are we safe to goggles? Yeah. Okay. Well, this isn't the worst. Because uh, we can Y guard and U-turn. I do worry about the Kangaskhan with potentially going for a, a low kick here. But it hasn't got low kick. And I don't know if... Hmm. Yeah, we can wire guard. I think we might have to bypass our... I just don't want to take a precipice place. We might have to bypass a trick room just for the moment. Um, I'm going to wide guard switch in Kyogre. I feel like precipice blades comes out probably low kick as well from Kang. We might see double edge into Incineroar, but it's more likely to see low kick if the Kang's got it. If it's bound to have it. I would imagine. But we'll get our weather up. We'll just rub this ground on and put a little bit of pressure onto it going into this next turn. At least we won't take any damage from Precipice Blades here. So, uh, ooh, eruption. We didn't even need to do it. Oh, we could have went for it. Uh, okay. There's a Drain Punch. I mean, Stack's taking it pretty well, uh, considering. Um, we could Water Spout here and just switch in Incineroar. Because um, we're going to see an Earth Power from the Groudon if it stays in. I don't think it will. Like, I really don't think it will. Um, we could take this opportunity to Trick Room and hope that the Groudon switches out and we could switch in our own Groudon. We're probably going to see... Um, we're going to see an Earth Power. That's the question. Do you stay in? With Grout. I don't think you stay in with Groudon. I think you switch your Groudon out. I'm going to Trick Room and I'm going to switch into Incineroar. I'm going to call it. I think you Groudon you don't want to lose. Yeah. So you're going to switch it out. That's fine. Um, Robombi. Whatever. Whatever you do, Robombi. Um, and then we'll get Incineroar in. Uh, we'll get the another Intimidate onto the Kang. Which means we should be able to take the Drain Punch. If we do see that. And we get a Trick Room up. Which is the big thing. Then the next turn we can get our gravity up, which is the other big thing for us. Uh, and we can... It's going to be close. It's going to be close! Uh, but that's fine. Because uh, we can fake out gravity if we want, and then Jaraball into the Robombu. We're probably better going for... Oh, we haven't got gravity, have we? Uh, we're putting, yeah, we're going to gyro ball into the Robombi and we're going to U-turn out into the can. Uh, it's fine. Um, yeah, I couldn't fit, I couldn't fit gravity onto the stacks, even though I would have liked it. It's just hard because you're kind of going without a move then. Uh, like, yeah, you need gyro ball, you need trick room, you need wide guard. You've either got skill swap or gravity, and we went for skill swap here. Maybe gravity is just the better option because we've got the dual primal, so we don't need to rely so much on our weather abuse. But skill swap kind of does appeal to me with Groudon, where we can skill swap beast boost onto it and then start just wrecking stuff. Although with the gravity, it would be a lot better. I'm going to see a fake out from the Kangaskhan. Um, here we go. I should take down the Rabomb. Oh, it's Sash Rabombi. Uh, we'll get the U-turn out. Uh, we'll bring in our own Groudon. If Stack Attacker gets through this turn, that's pretty nice for us. Um, I don't know what the Robombi's going to do. Robombi, what are you going to do? Um, yeah, well, I wonder if... It, I don't know why the Kang went for fake out. Should have just, like, attacked, unless he timed out or misclicked. I don't know. So, here we go. We've got the sun up. Uh, Robombi Pollen Puff. Where's that going? 
get into stacks. But that's fine, because now we get our Incineroar in. We still got a Trick Room up. Um, and we can go for... We can go Soul Stance. And Fake Out if we would like to do that, which might not be a bad idea. Um, fake Out the Rabombi. Just sword stance, I think. Yeah, the Kangas Khan is so weak right now. Um, or do we even need to fake out? Could we just U turn out on the Rabombi? Might be better, you know, and get Kyogre onto the field. Because does my opponent have Salamence? Yeah, but they're not. They're not bringing the Salamence to this game. Because if they have, they they're just regular Salamence. So it's better with Kangas Khan. Kangas Khan is like minus three as well, so it's doing nothing. Uh, and having that Intimidate in the back is going to be way more useful. And if we see the Groudon switch in here for my opponent, it's quite nice because we're going to be able to get a Sword Stance up, really put on a lot of pressure. And they get the Rain up as well, where we will... Yeah, there we go, you see. You're going to see the Kang switch out. Uh, I just need to get the Rabombi because we don't want to risk any Pollen Puff damage at all. So, um, But th this isn't the worst thing in the world because now we're kind of pinning my opponent. Like, we're going to get a Kyogre out. We've got Sword Stance Groudon out. So, my opponent can only fake out one one of our two Pokemon here. Um, and whichever one he doesn't, the other one's going to, like, wreck. So, I think the best bet for, <laughs> for my opponent, if they do bring the Kangas come back in, is to um, probably fake out the Kyogre, because the Precipice Blades could miss. That would be... That would be my thinking, my logic anyway. And it depends though if the crowd the opposing crowd on special or not. I think your best bet is to probably do that and then Yeah, hope that it misses and you get like an earth power into our crowd on. But we're doing alright at the minute. We still got a couple of turns of trick room left. So we might not even see the Kang come back in, but I would imagine it will be the Kangas Khan. Let's see. Cezernius. Oh man, this is all gone. Peep Tong for my opponent. Yeah, this is like disastrous for them. I mean, like he needed to bring Kang in there. I think he needed the the um the fake out support. So we'll just click a uh, um a precipice blades and a water spout because whatever happens here, whatever doesn't protect is going down. Xerneas protecting. Depends how slow this Groudon is as well. Precipice Blades! Okay, well, still not the, the end of the world. It does hit the uh, the Groudon. And uh, the Kangaskhan going to make its way back onto the field. Uh, it's going to try and stall at the Trick Room, obviously, with its Fake Out. Which isn't a bad idea with your Xerneas to try and get this Geomancy up. But we still got to turn a Trick Room. And uh, Groudon sitting in an uber nice position right now. So... I'm not too worried, and we still got Incineroar on the back as well. I think the big thing for us really is to make sure that our Groudon stays alive and kicking. Uh, we'll go for the Water Spout, and we'll go for another Precipice Blades. Um, but we're sitting pretty nice. Last turn of Trick Room, I think. There's a Fake Out from Kanga. Into Kyogre! You're going for the Precipice Blades miss. If it doesn't miss, then you're screwed. And it doesn't miss. Here we go, plus two. Can we take down the Xerneas? We can't, but <laughs> it doesn't matter if it gets that geomancy off. It really doesn't now. It, you're done. You're done. I swear. Um, we've got Incineroar on the back, and what we can do now is switch our Kyogre out for Incineroar and just Fire Punch. And um, like Groudon isn't going down to um to a Moonblast or a Dazzle, uh, unless they got like something like Hidden Power Ground, which would be. All the memes in one. Um, yeah, so Dual Primal is doing all right. Doing all right. Um, we'll switch into Insin, and then we'll go for that Fire Punch. Because switching the Kyogre out will lift the rain. Rain, rain, go away. We don't need to risk a Precipice Blades, and we'll just go for a, uh, a Fire Punch. Fear Punch. Uh, there's a cat coming in. Here we go. Tasty Intimidate, so useful onto the deer as always, Dazzling Gleam. Gonna come out, do some nice damage, uh, but crowd on like a champ, go on, boosh. There we go, and good game to my opponent. 
and a nice way for us to kick off today. So I kind of will take that first uh, <laughs> match. Like, so there's no, there's no, no words for it, is there? Um, shameless victory uh, from our opponent's forfeit turn one, game one. Um, but that one was a nice one. I mean, the team kind of worked pretty nicely there. Um, and we, we overcame a, a pretty powerful call. I still know we're low ladder at the minute, but it's it, it's an example of how the team can work for sure. And uh, there's definitely potential here, I think, with dual primals. It, I don't know if you get that feeling uh, when you're first playing a team, but I oh, we got Totem and we got Mattia. Uh, but you, you get a feeling with the team when you first play with it, when testing with it, and it just feels right. And this team kind of has that feeling, so we'll see, we'll see. We've got our next opponent, so let's hop straight into Team Pre. And our next opponent today is running a team of Xerneas, Kangaskhan, Lunala, Stack Attacker, Smeagol, and Incineroar. So, um, we've got a combination here of Lunala, Xerneas, very popular in the, the beginnings of the, uh, the Sun series, uh, doing so well, and then kind of dropped off after that, and I still think it's a really, really powerful combination um, that we're not seeing enough of, probably. Uh, Xerneas obviously boosts up with the Geomancy, you've got potential of Psych up on the Lunala, it offers Tailwind support, you've got the Stacker that offers the Trick Room support there. Uh, Smeagol with its fake out alongside Incineroar and Kangaskhan, so three fake out users here, uh, really supporting the entirety of the team. Um, I think we need Coco in this match, to be honest, because uh, Coco's electric terrain helps us a bunch against uh, Smeagol's uh, spore abuse and things like that. So I will bring Incineroar, Coco. Do we want. Uh, I think we need Groudon and Stacks as well, you know. Um, so I'm going to have to leave Kyogre Salamence. I just think we need... No! No on this screen. We're just blocking out our opponent. Sorry, Matia. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I just feel like we need the Trick Room. And we need Stacks and Groudon. I think as an end game, it could be quite useful to have. Let's see um, how we get on. Uh, the terrain's going to be so important for us here. We're going to see Kangaskhan and Xerneas come up for my opponent. Um, it's not the worst, honestly. Because we can try and fake out the Xerneas and Volt Switch into it as well. Um, the Kangaskhan, like it, we always say, it can only fake out one thing. Um, and you either trade fake outs or you don't. I mean, the other thing is we could go for a Z-move into Xerneas and just get some damage onto it um, which might be more useful uh, honestly for like later in the game uh, we'll go for that we'll go for the Z move there um, I really don't want the, the Geomancy going up Kangaskhan actually going to withdraw we're going to see uh, we're probably going to see a protect on the Xerneas which is not good um, but it's not the end of the world it really isn't and there's a protect, yeah. <sighs> okay. Fake out and Z move. I mean, at least we're getting some damage onto Xerneas now. But it, it's, it isn't the end of the world. And my opponent is just going to, I think, this whole game is going to cycle these intimidate, uh, these fake out users to support the Xerneas. So we've got to try, I think, to get a trick room up and... Uh, get guard on in a position where we can start doing some decent damage to zone. Uh, we do get at least some uh, damage off onto the zone with a Z move. Um, now, where do you fake out? Do we just double U turn and uh, Volt Switch just to try and get some sort of pivot? We're going to see fake out come out. It's going to stop the Incineroar. So. Probably not the worst, uh, as we get the, the Volt Switch into the Xerneas and get some decent damage onto it. To be honest, that's probably in uh, Precipice Blades range now. Um, and we'll get Groudon onto the field. Because the next time we could Sword Stance. Oh, do, we? do we Sword Stance? I just feel like the Xerneas protects the next turn. Um, there's the Geomancy, which is 
obvious. Yeah, this next turn I feel like the, the, the Xerneas probably protect and uh, the Incineral cause a U-turn out. Um, and I probably want a U-turn out as well with Incineral. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for that sword stance now. Well, we've got the opportunity to, and I'm gonna go for a U turn out onto the opposing Incineral. I I just think the Xerneas protects. I think you don't leave it all, like wide open now. There's no intimidate to come in from my opponent. A fire punch probably takes it down, or you've got to suspect that it does. So you you want that support next to it. So my opponent really is in that position where we probably are gonna see that happen. The Kangas can't coming in now. Which is fine. Yeah, there's the protect. Which is fine for us because we can bring in um, Stack Attacker. Which then ha splits my opponent's options. You know, they've got to either go for the fake out into Stack it to stop that trick room, or they've got to fake out into the Groudon and prevent the, the Precipice Blades, which can take both of their Pokemon down. And I don't think a double up from. Um, either at this point is going to be enough to take down what we've got out in the field. Uh, you're going to have to dazzle and low kick stack attacker, but if you do that, then Groudon hits his blades, and we pretty much will take this game if that happens. I'm going to trick room, and I'm going to go for the blades. So we'll see what my opponent goes for. I can say if they they trick room, I think they kind of seal their fate because. Incineral coming in can intimidate us, but it's not really helping against the stack attacker at this point. So there's a Kang Mega Revolving. Moonblast going for the double into something. It's going into the Groudon. Can they get the Groudon? Ooh, they might be able to, you know. Low kick. Where are we going? Oh. Okay, that's fine. I don't mind because the Precipice Blade should hit here. Uh, they do take stacks down. We do hit! Yes! Okay, here we go. Bye-bye, Kang. Bye-bye, Burn. And this is fine, because now we do have our Incineroar on the back. If it is Lunala and Incineroar for my opponent, that's fine. I'll bring in Coco right now, because I don't want our... Um, I don't want our Incineroar intimidated. I don't want to keep our... Yeah, it is Lunala. Yeah, there we go. Okay. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Um, yeah, that's that's super fine, isn't it? Um, and what we probably we could just double protect here, to be honest. Got to worry about a potential. Um, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna press this blades and hmm. Or do I? Do I preserve Groudon and go for? I could just double protect here. I could just double protect. I want to preserve Groudon, you see, for for an endgame against the Incineroar. I don't really want to drag this endgame out against my opponent. Now, we could see a Z-move here from Lunala, but I think what I'm going to try and do next turn is switch Groudon out into Incineroar and then Volt Switch with Coco on the Lunala. There's the Tailwind. Um, I think you still attack Groudon because it threatens your Incineroar. This could kind of backfire on us quite a lot, um, but I'm I'm willing to do this. Volt switch out onto Lunala. I think you attack the Groudon to protect your Incineroar at this point. And if you Z move into Incineroar, that's fine. I just want to break the Shadow Shield. That's the the main thing here. Coco should still add speed the Incineroar. Here's a Z move. I'm hoping it's into the Groudon. Make more sense to be into the Groudon, honestly. Like, we just protected, we're pretty open to the, this attack. Once you take it down, Incineroar's got a lot. It is into the Incineroar, so that's good for us. Uh, we'll take that pretty nicely for that stupidly strong Z move. Uh, we are going to see the Volt Switch uh, into the Lunala now. Darker's Lyra should be able to pick up the knockout. Uh, we'll get Groudon back onto the field. Um, and I think the next turn we need to just dock a Slariot, the Lunala, and hope that it hasn't got Protect. And then once the Lunala's down, the Incineroar is easy to deal with. 
Flare Blitz, gonna be into Groudon. Intimidate will help us out a bit. It's still gonna do a little bit of damage, which we don't like to see, but I mean, at this point, it's not too bad. Uh, yeah, so we'll go for that Darkest Lariat. Like, this should take the Lunala down. Uh, we'll protect the Groudon. It's just whether or not the Lunala has uh, protect or not. Um, or oh, Focus Blast. Ha. Hopefully it doesn't. We don't lose this game. Um, but we, I'm, I feel all right about closing this one up. We should be all right. Uh, Lunala does reveal protect, so that's that's still fine. Um, we're probably going to see the Incineroar. Hopefully it hasn't got low kick. Now it's got U-turn. It does go into our Incineroar. It's not doing enough though, is it? It really isn't doing enough damage. And even at double up now, I think we're going to be all right. But I do think you probably double the Incineroar here. So I'm going to stay in with Groudon and go for a Precipice Blades. Because there is a small chance that that we do take Moonguy's Beam and you never know, like a crit U-turn could take down our Incineroar here. But it does leave our Groudon open to get this Precipice Blades off and I think we take this U-turn to be honest. Oh, we've jinxed ourselves. <laughs> Precipice Blades. It does hit, thank goodness. Right, we just need to stall the, the Tailwind out now and we're, we're fine. <laughs> he said, oh no, we don't. There's a Tailwind gone. Coco coming back in. That's not great. And we don't actually have Thunder either. Uh, we have got Thunder, which we don't want to really be clicking. Uh, it's probably not the most optimal move to have on it when you, you're pairing it with the Sun. So we'll go for a Vault Switch. We'll go for a Fire Punch. Uh, whatever happens here, we're going to lock this up. I can't believe Incineroar got crit there. I can't believe. Uh, Vault Switch is actually enough to take down the Lunala and good game to my opponent. So that wraps up today's episode, my friends. I hope you've enjoyed it. I do apologize for the deliriousness and just general jabbering from myself. As I say, I'm not feeling my best. I'm not feeling uh, great, but it's been amazing fun getting going with this dual primal team. And uh, we've started the week perfectly with two really good victories. We'll be back tomorrow with the dual primal team. I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you you think of the team in general and where you'd maybe steer it if you were going to change things up later in the week but as it stands at the moment the team kind of feels pretty good so um i hope you're looking forward to the rest of the week's battles with it and as i say we're probably going to be one of those ones if you don't take it on another week we'll probably tweak it come the end of this week and finish it up and try and get that nice polished uh, article by the end of the week for you guys to try out and test out as well so um i'm gonna end it here i'm gonna say have a great day evening morning whatever time of day it is wherever you are i love you all very much and i will see you all for the next episode very soon so until then take care of yourselves and bye-bye